What up, guy in Carolina? Jackpot coming at you. It's Sunday morning, August the 9th, 2020. And, um, this is the video I didn't want to have to make. But I think that if we all look at ourselves in the mirror, we knew that it was probably coming. I have stood steadfast here on this channel ever since March, ever since, uh, the March Madness was canceled. There was this college baseball and all the spring sports was canceled. And, and it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Just chill out. We got we got time. We got four or five months. We got this. We got that. Uh, this thing's going to get better. This thing's going to be on the downward trend by the end of May. This thing's going to be about on downward on, by summer. And um, unfortunately, that has not been the case. Um, and I might be making this a little bit prematurely. Uh, I, I hope that I am. I hope that uh, this video ends up being the dumbest one I ever made because uh, it was totally uh, uh, jumping the gun, totally uh, just me uh, with a knee-jerk reaction, but I don't think so. I don't think so. So yesterday, um, the MAC, Mid-America Conference, cancels uh, college football and all fall sports for 2020. Now, uh, the difference there is the MAC is uh, it's, it's a it's a Power Five conference. It's not a Power Five conference. Excuse me. It's an FBS conference, though. It's a FBS conference. They're the first one to do it. Um, they're talking about the Big Ten might be doing it uh, today or tomorrow. I think uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Pac-12 would be the first ones to, uh, to decide to uh, set out just because of uh, you know, geographical location. And just, I think Pac-12 would be the first ones to um, nix it in the bud. But if one of these Power Five conferences decides that they're not going to have a season, none of them are. Uh, they're just not going to because, I mean, what would be the – how are you going to have a – how are you going to have any kind of a postseason? How are you going to be able to determine a champion? How You can't. You, you just can't. And uh, do I agree with this? Part, the, 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 the side of me that loves to watch college football, the side of me that's a huge college football fan, it has been uh, ever since you know I even knew what sports was, what a TV was, uh, or what a football was, uh, you know, that young, yeah. That part of me, no, God, I don't want to see this happen. I do not want to see it happen. But, I mean, the reality is we got to get this thing behind us. We got to get it behind us somewhere or the other. And um, <laughs> it is not playing college football going to uh, help, help to uh, – prevent uh, a bunch of coronavirus outbreak maybe maybe a little bit you know um in the grand scheme of things i think it'd just be a, a a drop of water in a huge bucket but these people these athletic directors these these universities these presidents they have to look at the financial side of things in the broad spectrum they have to look at it in the broad spectrum. And, yes, if they cancel college football season, are they going to lose millions upon millions upon multiple millions of dollars? Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But um, what's the impact going to be if they play the season? Some say selfishly if they, if they play the season. And don't get me wrong. 95% of these players want to play this season. They want to play. The ones that want to opt out, there's very few. There's very few. There, there's more and more every day, but it's a very small segment of the uh, population of the college football uh, world that wants to opt out. Um, those that, that want to play... But is it is it worth it? Well, the, 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 they have to look at it from that. that sorry, sorry, I just got tongue tied here for a moment on a tangent. Um, 
how much would it cost them in the long run financially if they played the season and one, just one, gets sick and dies. And you know, and, and, and there wouldn't even be any proof, really, they picked it up from participating in college football or extracurricular activities or what have you. But, but you have it there. You have it, and somebody can file a lawsuit. And somebody will file a lawsuit. And it's been my, uh, just my experience in life, just what I've seen happen, that when someone sues a large entity or a large company uh, for something, it, it always seems like to me they end up getting something out of it. They get something out of it. Okay? The big company will settle with them. They will settle with them out of court because they don't want to take things to court. They, they want to stay out of they want to stay out of the legal system because they don't want to fight it because it's going to cost them even more money to do that on top of whatever they're going to be paying out. So they want they want to stay out of court. Um, I mean, I guess you all know that already. They can't take that chance. They just can't take that chance, and they ain't going to take that chance. They're not going to. I'm telling you, uh, we're not going to have a 2020 college football season. We're not going to have one. Um, I expect it to come sometime this week. I hope it comes sometime this week. I really do because, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I'm tired of sitting here and, and hee-hawing back and forth and, and, you know, trying to figure out what... I mean, I haven't made my preseason videos this year. I haven't done my official picks for the Gamecocks yet. Because, I mean, I don't, I don't think that, I th- didn't think there was going to be one anyway, and now I'm, I'm pretty sold on it. I'm pretty sold on the fact that there's not going to be one. So, I mean, what's the point in, in beating a dead horse and making predictions and make-believe shit that's not even going to happen? It ain't even going to happen. I mean, look at baseball, man. Look at baseball. <laughs> what a freaking joke it is, man. It, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Cardboard cutouts in the stands and just you got one team here that's that's played like three games all year because they had an outbreak. But these people and these are these are professional athletes who went out, who go out partying and uh end up uh, a bunch of them you know, they get sick and uh and, you know their their team can't play their games. Everybody's quarantined or whatever the fuck. And uh you have that. Those and these are people that are that are getting paid. They are getting paid to do a job, just like me or you going to work. You know, every day of the week, those professional athletes are getting paid a jo- uh, to work a job, and they can't even behave themselves. They can't behave themselves. And I'm talking to uh, the crowd out there, the uh, the gun toting. Uh, you know, staunch old. Uh, it's my right to do however I want to do, and you can't make me put on a mask, and you can't make good things don't work, and this, that, and the other. I'm talking to that crowd out there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. I mean, it's, it's largely political. It is. You can't hardly keep politics out of it. Um, but I mean, it, <laughs> if these people had done what they were supposed to do, if they had gotten out of this, in head of this thing. Oh, just a little bit quicker. If everybody had complied, if you know, you didn't have uh, states that drug their feet uh, on, on the social distance, and you didn't and they didn't drug their feet on the mask wear and drug the feet. Hell, South Carolina, our, our, this idiot governor we got here, he still never did make it a mandate, but you had to wear one. So it's up to the companies to do to do so. Now, if you go in Walmart, you have to have a mask on. If you go into uh, Lowe's uh, home improvements, you have to have a mask on. If you uh, go into certain restaurants, you have to have a mask on. But if you uh, go into the, fa- the freaking family dollar, you have to have a mask on. But our stinking government can't just go on ahead and say, okay, it's a law. You go anywhere in a public place, you have to. Well, they did so in Pennsylvania where I was on vacation, and their cases are dropping. Uh, but it's, it's not dropping everywhere, and uh, that's just reality. So here we go. And then there's the talk of uh, 
the college football players uh, forming a union. Uh, they don't think that they're uh, that they're taken care of. They don't think they're treated fairly uh, in a number of ways. And let me just be frank about that. On a lot of fronts, I agree with that. I agree with that. They're not pay for it. First of all, I think, you know, if a college player uh, during the offseason, I think if he wants to sit down, if he's a, 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 a an elite star, a, 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 a Trevor Lawrence, um, a, a, a Travis Etienne uh, over at Clemson, a, um, you know, just whoever, freaking um, – DeAndre Swift from Georgia last year. Um, just so, anybody like that. Somebody that everybody knows who he is. Okay? Um, if they want to sit down in the spring somewhere um, and rent out a freaking hotel room and sign autographs for three hours, I think they ought to be able to do it. They ought to be able to be paid for their signature. There's a video game. They they scrapped all these video games. Video games come out if they um, have they uh, a you know a, a video game with a, a freaking uh, you know um, image on there of Tavian Feaster when they play for the South Carolina Gamecocks. They should be paid for that, man. They should be paid for their likeness, and I think they should be allowed to be paid for their signature. Um, an idiot like me can sit here and uh, make a dumb 15-minute YouTube video. And I can get paid for it. Why can't they? These guys can't work a real job. Uh, they can't work a real job. I mean, it's 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 totally it's virtually impossible for them to uh, to make any extra money uh, other than doing something illegal. Uh, it, it is. I mean, with workouts, um, with the regimen during the spring. I mean, with uh, with with training, with film study, with all the stuff that they have to do and put in. Uh, they don't have time. They don't have time to go out and make any money. They just don't. Um, so they should be able to be paid for their likenesses, for their signatures, and uh, for that stuff. I do believe that they should. And I don't know uh, that that's uh, listed in what any of the demands. I haven't. I don't know that a formal anything's been drawn up formally. Um, it's just rumblings and rumors, rumor and innuendo, uh, as it were, at this point. But I think that uh, that thing, that movement's definitely going to uh, gather some steam behind that locomotive, and it's not going to slow down. It's not going to slow down just because they canceled the season. Um, uh, so uh, do think of that what you may. Now, some of their demands, some of the ones I've seen were just ridiculous. I mean, uh, Pac-12, I mean, over there at Pac-12, uh, th those players uh, were talking about <laughs> – 50% of all the revenue, uh, of all TV revenue or so, uh, or maybe the attendance, I don't know. They, they wanted 50% of the revenue or something. Okay, here's the deal. Um, and they know, they know the power they have, and they know they kind of got them over a barrel in a way because college football supports all these other sports. All, it supports all these other sports at, uh, at all these other schools. Yes, though, college football it makes a lot of money. It makes a lot of money. College basketball helps support the athletic department in some schools. I mean, where you have a really huge fan base, you have a, a large arena, and they have a, you know a really uh, a really uh, large gate every time uh, they they play, uh, like your Kentuckys or uh, you know Louisville, uh, places like that, um, Kansas. Uh, you know, but some other places that 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 struggle. Like, I don't use for an example. Um, I don't know. <laughs> William and Mary, <laughs> we'll say, for example. I doubt that basketball program makes a lot of money. Okay. Marshall, I doubt that basketball program makes a lot of money. Um, so it's up to football to foot the bill for all this. You got to pay, uh, pay for your uniforms. You got to pay for uh, your uh, equipment. 
got to pay travel. You got to pay a football secretary to work in the office. You got to pay uh, all these interns. But they don't make a lot of money. There are just there are so many expenditures. I can't even list them all. But that involves, on top of, that helps buy, that helps out west. Uh, you're talking about the Pac-12. Well, you know, your football revenue at Arizona State helps buy the uniforms for the, uh, the girls' softball team at Arizona State that probably can't support itself. It helps buy uh, you know, swimming goggles for the, the girls on, the, uh, on the, uh, the, the swim team at Stanford. Those guys deserve to uh, have a program that they can compete at as well, where they can, a platform where they can also um, excel. And you'd be taking it away, uh, you know, if you take, by taking all this revenue, you can't. You cannot, they can't have 50% of the revenue. You're just not. It's not going to happen. I mean, that's just, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, some of that needs to be a little bit more thought out, but I do believe that they should be uh, treated a little bit more fairly uh, than what they are. They know that they have a loud voice. They know that what they say uh, carries a lot of weight, and their actions uh, carry a lot of weight, and that they kind of drive the bus for the uh, athletic departments of these universities. So there's that. And I think that the, uh, the NCAA and the uh, college athletic directors across the country and that our uh, conference commissioners, um, they're scared of that happening. They're scared of that happening and, and, what that, and what that might mean for intercollegiate athletics going forward. It scares me a little bit too. And I, I don't want to see anything happen to uh, the sport that I love, uh, but it, it seems it already has. So where, where do we go from here? I mean, what do we do? Um, what are you going to do this fall? What am I going to do? Well, I mean, maybe, first of all, maybe hopefully they'll have an NFL season of some sort. And uh, you know, hopefully it won't be the uh, bona fide shit show that Major League Baseball has been. Although, uh, it, you know, it looks, uh, looks to be... Um, like that, it, it's it's so many factors going in there. It'd be impossible for it not to be a shit show on some some degree. Uh, college or excuse me, high school sports. Uh, I believe in some states that they're going to be allowed to uh, to be held. Some states they are, some they are. Here in South Carolina, I believe they're practicing right now and uh, going forward with that. So you know, maybe maybe the high school game gets a little bit more exposure this year um, because of the fact that there's not going to be a college game. You know, and maybe I get honed up on my NFL skills a little bit. You know, I spend so much time during the week uh, between working and then delving into the college football game because, I mean, when the season gets going, I mean, you know how I do. I go with, with my point spreads, and, and we pick games against the spread. Love it. I love it, man. I, I love it. I've been doing that stuff um, just willy-nilly since I was, like, 12 or 13 years old. And uh, so you know, now we're not going to be able to do that. But um, – will um, be able to maybe uh, you know catch uh, back up on my NFL stuff I, which I've you know largely ignored for probably the past five six years it's like oh that's on today <laughs> ain't got time I got to do this recap from yesterday <laughs> I mean that's that's where we're at um, renovating a, uh, a room in the house here uh, into uh, kind of bit of a uh, a gamecock cave if you will, uh, and slash uh, room for me to chill out in, slash uh, studio, the Jackin studio, if you will, uh, where, uh, you know, maybe the production quality, I can uh, up the production quality on some of these videos, and uh, I, what I participate in uh, twice a week, which is uh, the Rob Comrade and Kale Show podcast. So put more time and effort into that. There's more stuff around the house to do. Um, and before you know it, it'll be next year, guys. It'll be next year. Um, how's it going to play out uh, as far as players? Who's going to be eligible? Who ain't? Um, who, uh, you know, who's going to go on and to the NFL draft? And I firmly think there's no season. You will no longer see uh, Trevor Lawrence at Clemson. Uh, I just don't. I think he's probably played his last game up there. Sorry for all you Tiger fans. 
Um, I'm sorry, too. I mean, like I said, I'd like to see the kid play. I want to see them all be able to enjoy the sports that they love, but, I mean, it's just not going to happen. Uh, Justin Fields at Ohio State, same thing. You're probably never going to see him play uh, in a Buckeye uniform again. Next time you see him, it'll probably be in an NFL uniform. Um, I mean, the high school players, the, the college players, we're just going to – it's all going to just kind of run together here uh, for 2021. And I'm thinking, I'm praying, hopefully, you know, they're able to do something for the spring. Hopefully they're able to get something together and play spring ball. But you got to think, too, about a college athlete – as well are they going to be able to are some of them going to be able to hold up to that i mean they're well trained their bodies are 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 they're able to withstand a lot of punishment but you're talking if we played a full season in the spring um 11 games say and then you turn and you end up say in the in the in the may beginning of june whatever it would take to play it out and then you talk about turn back around um having practice for 2021 preseason and then playing 2021 season, you're talking about playing anywhere from 22 to 25 games within the span of nine, 10 months, man. I mean, that's really going to take the toll, really take a huge toll on a kid's body. Um, and I just, I just have questions of how they would be able to hold up to that. Some of them, some of them would do fine. Some of them would do fine. Some of them, I, I just, I just don't know. Uh, what kind of product you would be seeing on the field, uh, especially uh, probably getting later on into the 2021 part of the season. I can just see just fatigue setting in, see a lot of injuries um, and that type of stuff. So I don't know that would necessarily be a good scenario. I really don't. But, guys, that's just my take on it. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But (laughs) you know I'm not. You know I'm not right. Or I'm not wrong. This is this is not gonna, this is not going away uh, without a vaccine, and um, there's not gonna be any college football this year. There's just not. There's too much risk, too much money at stake. Uh, so that's that's about uh, all I got to say about it. One thing I can say for certain is that Taters, <laughs> you're not competing for no national championship this year. <laughs> can't stand you. Oh, and this. Can a college football coach be fired for going O and O for a season? Mm. And how would that affect Will Muschamp's buyout at South Carolina if there's absolutely no season whatsoever? I mean, would it just carry forward to next year? And then they, they – because, you know, the, the main reason they say behind that he wasn't fired after 2019 was because of the huge buyout uh, because the idiot – athletic department um, gave him a uh, huge contract that paid him upwards of six million bucks a year or so uh, through I think 2024 or something my god my god Um, but as with all buyouts with all these coaches it decreases every year it decreases every year and um, I think it was like five million dollars that it was going to lose between 2019 and 2020 so I'm just interested to see how that will work. If they'll just just bridge that over one year, um, because there was no season, I'm thinking that they probably will. Uh, but if they don't, I mean that's a, that's a good thing because I mean it gets us that much closer to uh, being able to find a new coach and being able to get this program steered in the right freaking direction. Now, get in the right freaking direction, and don't get me wrong uh, or hear me wrong when I'm saying that. I, I want to see him succeed. I want to see him to succeed. But the past is the best indicator of the future. Okay, the past is the best indicator of the future, and the past has shown that his offenses uh, doesn't matter who he hires as a coordinator are pathetic, lethargic, archaic as hell, and and it's not going to change. It's not going to change. Um, we just need to move forward. We need to move forward, move on, and the quicker we can do that, uh, the better. Maybe you know before I'm 60 years old, I'll get to see us participate in at least a college football playoff if they expand it to eight teams so i'm 44 now so we got 16 years i think we can make it don't you maybe i don't know anyway i'm gonna get out of here guys i'll see y'all later appreciate it if you enjoyed the content of today's video hit this uh, video with a thumbs up 
uh, down there. If uh, you didn't, I mean, give me a thumbs down. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, if there was a reaction, that means there was an interaction. And that's a good thing for Carolina Jackpot. I'll see y'all later. Have a great Sunday. Poosh, and I'm out. Go Gamecocks. Spurs up my toes up, baby. Woo!